Okay, so it says the electric flux through a square shaped area of some size near a large charged sheet is found to be some value. Let me label this electric flux, capital V E, and the area is parallel to the plate. Oh, that means, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me actually draw this. Um, I am going to draw the side view of both the, the charged sheet and the, the square shaped area. So in the side view, the charged sheet would appear something like this. Um, let's say it's all positively charged. Um, so <laughs> not gonna draw the chart. So there's a, um, it looks like a line, but it's a side view. So it's a, it's a plane that extends infinitely uh, both uh, in the direction perpendicular to the screen and along the direction along the screen. So for a plane shaped that way, the electric field due to those charged charges would point straight away from the plane. And it says the area that we are considering, which is kind of an abstract um, geometric shape that you imagine placing somewhere, a square shape. So, um, so from so it says it's a parallel to the plate. So from the side view, it'll also look like a line, and that line would have some length, and this length is uh, let me call this d, d. And uh, there's you know in the direction pointing into and out of the plane. That's also d. So it has square area. So from all the description, um, you see that the, the area is perpendicular to the electric field or in the language we prefer, the surface normal for the area is parallel to the electric field. So the expression for the electric flux becomes relatively simple, E dot A, the, the direction of electric field and area are parallel. So it's just the magnitude of electric field times the magnitude of area. So, um, so you can definitely calculate it that way. Uh, if you remember the formula for electric field due to uh, an infinite, infinite charge of the plane, electric field of a plane is given by two pi Coulomb constant times surface charge density. And that's exactly what they're asking. Um, you can plug this into the expression here, plug in expression for area, uh, solve it for, uh, let, yeah, I guess I, let me solve it for sigma. So, uh, so let me <laughs> do that. Instead of saying that you can do that, let me do that. Since we are given the flux and we are looking for sigma. So the equation that you're solving for is a flux is equal to the electric field, two pi k epsilon sigma times the area um, d squared for the um, square area. Um, solve it for sigma, then you get sigma is equal to the electric flux divided by two pi k epsilon this k, k epsilon, k e, Coulomb constant, uh, d squared. So in this expression, you know everything, everything's given, just to make sure you convert the units, you know, convert distance to meters from centimeter. And uh, you will get an answer. Make sure you convert it to correct unit for pico Coulomb here, pico meaning 10 to the minus 12. <laughs> Watch out for those prefixes. And that should be good. Now that is a one way to do it. Um, and that's the way the hint is uh, suggesting that you do. There's actually another way to do this, uh, which uh, does require more um, better understanding of Gauss's law, as in you have to know how to apply Gauss's law. But it, uh, if once you understand this, then um, it involves, uh, frankly, less memorization. So, so let me demonstrate that. Now, directly applying Gauss's right now does pose a challenge in that if you try to say that electric flux given is equal to, well, what the Gauss's law says is um, four pi Coulomb constant times charge and closed, 
or you know, in the other presentation, charge and closed divide by epsilon naught. Um, you run into this problem of thinking about what is charge and closed. It's, uh, um, I mean, charge and closed is not the same as the charge density, although it's going to be related. So, so the, but the, that's the very first question you run into. What is the charge and closed? In fact, uh, with the open surface we have, it's not actually enclosing any charge. So to make use of Gauss's law at all, um, by the way, uh, yeah, 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 let me, <laughs> well, <laughs> by the way, the expression for flux, we normally write it this way, um, with over an area integral over a closed surface of E dot dA. So to make use of Gauss's law, you have to imagine some extension to the existing setup that would uh, enclose the charge. And I need to make the extension in such a way that the, the flux that is given here can be related to net flux out of the closed surface that we are going to look at. And then hopefully that all of that can be related to charge density and be worked out. So here, this is how I'm going to imagine producing this closed surface that's based on this original square-shaped open surface. I'm going to imagine similar square surface on the other side at the same distance, one end of mattering, but for symmetry's sake, at the same distance as the first uh, surface there. Now I have two kind of base areas of a cylinder, so I can imagine connecting them by the side surfaces so that this is basically a something that looks uh, roughly cubic. Uh, so I have a cube and I'm looking at the electric flux out of that cube. And as you consider the picture, I hope you can see that the flux out of this side surfaces are zero because electric field is parallel to the plane or perpendicular to the surface normal. So, so the only flux that's going through any surface at all is the flux through the top and the bottom surface. And what I hope you recognize is from the symmetry that the flux through the top and flux through the bottom, they are equal. They are equal in magnitude, they are, they are equal in sign too, because in both cases the flux is going out of the uh, out of the volume. So they bo both count as positive. So which means I have, an, an, and the question gave us flux of one of them. So I have an expression for this flux, uh, net flux out of the closed uh, surface. And that's gonna be the twice the amount of flux that's given in the question. So twice this number is the net flux out of the surface, net flux uh, of closed surface. And we can relate this uh, directly to Gauss's law. It's going to be 4 pi times the Coulomb constant times the amount of charge that's enclosed here. That's the amount of, um, that's the <laughs> charge enclosed. So I need to express that in terms of charge density. Um, it's going to be charge density sigma times the area of the portion of the infinite charged plane. And uh, oh, and I know the expression for area, that's a d squared there. So let me write that down as q and close to here. That's going to be charge density sigma times the area d squared. So I can solve this for sigma. And solving it for sigma, this is what you end up with. You get sigma is equal to 2 phi e divided by 4 pi k epsilon naught, epsilon naught, k e. <laughs> so it's going to be phi uh, electric flux divided by 2 cancels one factor of 2 out of 4, so 2 pi Coulomb constant times, and I need to divide that by d squared, d squared. And you see that the answer that you get is the same answer that we had earlier. It, um, it just uh, didn't involve memorizing this particular expression here. Instead, it involved you basically knowing how to drive the electric field expression if you had to. 
So that's a second way to do it. I think both uh, methods, uh, once you know what you're doing, involve basically same amount of effort.